Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. We'll be covering how CPG brands can leverage creator marketing to drive results. Um, with us today, we have a wonderful panel of experts here to um, chat through their experience in the industry and hopefully give you um, some insight and behind the scenes of really how um, creators are incorporating CPG content into their everyday lives and everyday content. And um, we'll be hearing from Savelli Rohani on our team here at LTK, who currently leads our CPG big box and home team, Christine Kong, who's a content creator with um, the Daily Confidence, and then Shala Sandoval, who is a content creator for Treehouse and Treads. And um, so with that, we'll jump right into the presentation with a quick overview of who LTK is. Um, if you're not familiar with our company, um, what we say we do is we power creator commerce. Um, so that's a big statement when I think of that from a brand's end. It could, it could mean a lot of different things. Um, I'm not going to read through every piece of data there on the page, but I'm going to summarize kind of what our main differentiators are in the industry and really what makes us unique. Um, so for you as a brand, LTK provides you with the technology. Um, we do have a five-star shopping app, LTK. Um, many of our brands actually see the majority of their sales coming from this app. So those are sales that are completely incremental to their creator programs and that they really wouldn't see outside of LTK. Um, it gives uh, your brand's content kind of that shopping experience and kind of those legs that longer longevity to really be consumed um, through a longer format in a longer period of time. Um, and then we also have um, on the tech end, just 11 years of influencer backed data. Um, and that's data that we review in any decisions we make and to really power your brand with the tools that we offer you from um, casting and program recommendations to the reporting that you see post campaign and really everything in between. And then we also provide your brand with the consulting. Um, so we have thousands of conversations with brands each month, really with the focus of fitting each brand's unique um, KPIs and goals. Um, and we partner with brands really of all shapes and sizes. So across category, across um, size and industry, um, and we have that tools for each brand to really uniquely position themselves in the creator marketplace. Um, and then kind of on the flip side, so on the influencer and shopper side, we actually provide our creators and um, with that same experience. So with that tech to really kind of back their, back their content, um, and you'll hear from creators today, um, as well as kind of that consulting as well. Um, and we have a whole team dedicated to creating this seamless mobile in-app shopping experience where your content can be consumed um, by, by shoppers of all of all kinds. So all of this combined really provides brands with a powerful ecosystem and um, to be just as successful as possible in the ever-changing creator um, marketing space. And um, so today we will be covering some insights from um, a recent LTK CPG study, um, as well as hearing kind of some insights um, sprinkled in there from um, a shopper study that we did just about our current economic times. Um, and then we'll wrap with um, hearing from a panel of experts. And then if we have time, we'll move into a Q&A. There is um, a box, a chat box there at the bottom. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit them. And we can certainly um, follow up post webinar as well with, with um, answers. Um, so I guess today we're focused on consumer product goods, the CPG industry. So kind of reading through the spoiler there, creators are linking to CPG products more today than they are in years past. So kind of reading through this, when I think about that from um, the creator space in general, creators are extremely strategic with their linking strategy. So this alone really shows that their audiences are no longer just asking them, hey, where's your shirt from? But they're asking them, what color is your nail polish? What are you making for dinner tonight? What do you use to clean your house? Um, and all of this we're really seeing in kind of the data, both um, on LTK and um, through the consumer studies we recently conducted, um, which aligns nicely to kind of a more macro shift that we're seeing in the industry, which is consumers are shopping kind of that entirety of a creator's um, life. Um, so the next slide here just shows, I obviously won't read through this whole page, but it shows um, kind of how our studies were conducted. So we did two separate studies with about 
2,000 participants, um, adult women and men, ranges 18 plus in the US with 97% confidence. Um, and I just want to call out all the imagery in this presentation is pulled from our LTK app. So you can kind of get a sense of what type of content is in there, how um, shoppers are really interacting with that content, and what that looks like. Um, and I just thought this photo did a great job of summarizing real life and um, what people what people are buying on the regular basis. Um, so jumping in here, so we have a few insights we're going to go through. Um, insight one here, uh, creator shopping influencer goes beyond a click. So consumers are shopping through social media and purchasing in store through creator recommendations. Um, based on some recent data we've seen, we saw that 72% of the general population is shopping some from social media. And I think that's really interesting because that's a pretty, that's the majority are, are uh, shopping through social media. And when you take a step back and you think of CPG companies and, and how consumers are really purchasing, what their purchasing behavior looks like, we know that some of that's also happening in store. So kind of diving in a little bit to that in-store moment there. We see, um, based on our recent survey, beauty purchases from in-store through creator recommendations. The data is there kind of on that first section on the right. So 47% of Gen Z said that they shopped beauty in-store from creator recommendations and 44% of millennials. Um, the same question um, in the food and beverage space, 49% of millennials are saying that they purchase food and beverage in-store from creator recommendations and 45% of Gen Z. Um, so Gen Z over indexes and in kind of that beauty category and millennials really over index in store purchases in that food and beverage category. Um, when I think of it from the brand standpoint, when you take a step back and you really think about um, the impact on your brand, it's pretty incredible that nearly 50% of those groups are over indexing in those categories and are purchasing in store based on something they saw online on social media. Um, to me, what this means is creators can really bring an efficiency to your brand and through um, your marketing tactics and just thinking through the products that certain generations of creators should be promoting and kind of how, how you should think about that for in-store. Um, we recently did a uh, in-store test um, with the goal of does, can we drive uh, in-store sales through creators? And so we did a test with the brand and that was pretty custom and unique to them. But basically what we did was we looked at who was driving um, sales for the brand just outside of in-store. And then we provided those creators with you know, an, a, a unique in-store code that they could use um, and promote on their social channels, channels to their followers and shoppers. Hey, if you happen to be shopping in-store, here's a code um, for you to use. Um, through that promotion, we actually saw 16, almost 17% of the sales from that campaign coming from in-store purchases. Um, and what was really compelling and, and cool for creators is we did pay them commission back. And so it made them loyal to the brand. Um, it kind of incentivized them to push both online and in-store um, because they earned that commission there. And we were able to track that at the influencer level, which was um, super cool to see. And so it isn't always necessarily an apples to apples solution per brand. Tracking that online to offline is um, definitely a complex conversation, but we are testing and learning in this space. So it's exciting to see kind of um, initial and early, early results to kind of back the data that we've seen in from the consumer survey. And then jumping to the next slide there. So Really just taking a step back, um, this presentation is, is data heavy before we get into the panel. So just wanna pause um, from the data and show some sample content from our um, panelists today. So seeing this content, I can totally see why shoppers are also inspired, not just to shop digitally, um, but in store through creators. Um, looking at that board there, I, I think back to kind of how I was shopping for, or holiday, the 4th of July, and I saw across social media, different recipes and different foods to try. And I totally tested some of those for myself and my family um, and purchased all those products in store. So I think it just speaks volumes um, that the content online can inspire kind of that online offline activity. Um, and as we saw in the data, this spans all verticals. So certainly generations are stop shopping certain products more in store. Um, and I think that's cool for from a brand perspective, because you can really 
tailor and target who you would like to reach for your brand knowing that. So moving to insight number two. So LTK creators are posting more across all categories. So the data on this page here is LTK creators posting to the LTK app growth per category. So when we look at the unique products um, posted in our app, um, comparing Q1 of 2020 to Q1 of this year, we saw a huge spike, so 177% growth in food and beverage. So again, that's the products that creators are actually tagging within our app. Um, looking at that same stat, we saw 129% growth in electronics and 60% growth in beauty and personal care. Um, creators are showing more than just what they're wearing, which is obviously very shoppable and wonderful and that's going nowhere, but they're also showing their daily beauty routines, what they're buying electronic wise. I, I mean, I've personally seen certain TVs across all my social channels um, these days that, that I would like to buy um, food and beverage products, which we kind of highlighted on the previous page. Um, and I think thinking back to kind of like the why behind this, we've just seen a big shift in both big box and kind of single brands really spending on campaigns with LTK in these categories. So they're leaning into kind of this growth and are in line with this shift in trends. Um, and we've just kind of experienced uh, explosive growth, um, both in the posting habits of creator, as well as what brands are leaning into um, working with LTK um, within these categories. Uh, so we have seen growth across the board in LTK linking, but I think these numbers really do speak for themselves. Creators are showing the entirety of their products in their lives and shoppers are responding. So kind of just bringing that point home, this is a sample content we pulled from the app. So this is a creator showcasing what she was making for her kids. And she linked not only, you know, the tray that she was using, but also all the products that were that were on the tray. Um, so the creator linked kind of all the holiday essentials that she needed for herself, including kind of the recipe she was making. Um, this is just one small example, but this type of content spans um, beauty routines, grocery hauls, and kind of just the day in the life of content that we've kind of seen this mass growth in. Awesome. So moving here into insight number three, millennials are the most influenced to purchase CPG products through creator. So a lot of different words on this page here, but what you're looking at um, is top 10 shopped categories um, per creator. So for the general population, for millennials, and then for Gen Z. Um, I've highlighted in green um, what we consider kind of a major CPG category, so your eye can kind of naturally go to those. Um, but the data on this page really shows the categories again shopped by creator through generation. Um, my main takeaways is kind of beauty and personal care are number one across all categories. Um, so consumers are very keen to buy beauty product. Um, I think, again, going back to the creator authenticity, and um, they're able to speak to it with the rise of video and short form content, you can really get to understand um, a beauty products or a personal care products benefits and um, through those videos. And um, that's kind of spanning general population, millennial and Gen Z. Um, cleaning supplies is the next CPG product across all generations, which um, I guess no surprise coming out of the, our last couple of years, but we also see everything from grocery to um, all natural and organic, um, beer, wine, baby, um, health and wellness sprinkled in um, through each category. Um, from there, kind of the needs of each generation um, change. And I think it's it's interesting to see the needs of millennial are different than the needs of Gen Z. Um, and I think this is why Creator plugs in so nicely to this space. You can really target on where consumers um, are in their lives and they've essentially opted into following certain influencers for these recommendations. Awesome. So, Leaning in here, I believe this is our last insight before we get to the summary. So insight number four, and um, seasonal and life stage shopping are the top searches in the LTK app. So we looked at, and we pulled data for, for this year, January through June of what consumers are searching for in the LTK app. So when you go to our app, 
um, you are able to kind of shop the content through the creators you're following. You can also search for certain content through search terms. Um, so I pulled out from the top um, shopped or the top search terms really what was relevant for CPG. Um, looking at January, we saw everything from Valentine's Day to maternity and home, moving into um, kind of the spring season. So into March, we saw home and Easter kind of pop up more in the searches. And then later into spring, we see Mother's Day pop up. And um, later in the summer, we see Father's Day, wedding guest, um, home continue to be a constant throughout the app, which I think is really cool um, to see kind of home and maternity be, be kind of consistent top searches throughout the app. But really my two main takeaways here are shoppers are interested in seasonal moments. And this plugs in so relevantly to the CPG industry. So everything from Valentine's Day to Mother's Day to Father's Day to any major holiday, um, we really see kind of in within the LTK app, our shoppers being kind of inclined and wanting to be inspired for these um, larger moments in their lives. Um, and then there's a strong focus on family and uh, mothers and maternity. And I think that's interesting because um, going back to the data from the millennial, uh, we saw big um, uptick in certain categories being shopped there. Our app definitely skews female and skews kind of in that millennial Gen Z range. And so we, we plug in nicely for certain target demographics there as well. Um, so not only are creators linking across category, but consumers are also shopping across category and um, which speaks volumes. And we kind of see this all being tied together by consumers are being really thoughtful shoppers right now. Um, they're wanting to be mindful of what they're buying. Um, we see the general population based on a recent survey there a recent survey and to save money they're really driving less and they're shopping online and majority mobile and um, to save money um, and we see that 61 percent of the majority of online shopping is done through a mobile device um, thus i feel like ltk kind of brings it full circle for consumers it saves you time and um, you're allowed to search through the app or able to search through the app um, and you don't have to drive and so we really see kind of um, inflation's impact on buying power from the last six months. Um, we've ranked here who's impacted um, to the least impacted. So I'm um, just reading through these stats here, the most impacted households with less than 50K income, um, low impact households with more than 100K in income and millennials and improved Gen Z's buying power has actually improved. Um, so again, this is just a sample of data of, um, I guess, who's buying in the CPG space, what they're buying, um, the generational approach, and kind of where the search terms, where it makes sense to plug into LTK and um, our shopper base um, naturally within our app. So bringing it home, I'm just going to read through um, the summary here. Uh, creators are efficient driving sales both online and offline. Again, it's making um, it, it makes investing in creator efficient for brands, um, especially um, when you're able to kind of justify um, spend um, right now. Uh, food and Bev, electronics and beauty are all growing at rapid pace and with creator posting habits, consumers are more, more price conscious but are finding ways to save money. So shopping online and driving less. Um, Gen Z millennials and over 100K um, incomes are the least impacted by inflation and millennials are heavily influenced to, to shop CPG products through creator. And um, beauty is that number one shopped category across generation. And um, so that's the insights we have today. We will be um, emailing this report um, out after as well. So you will have that in your inboxes, but of course, feel free to ask any questions in the chat and we can certainly um, get back to you. But now we're gonna be moving into our panel of experts. So I'll have have everyone um, unmute and turn on your cameras. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi Thank you so much for, for joining today. Um, to kick us off, I just wanted to um, chat with Sibeli Rouhani a little bit. So I, I introduced her at the start of the call. She does lead our big box and CPG team here at LTK. And um, Sibeli comes from amazing um, experience in the CPG background. So from CVS to L'Oreal to Anheuser-Busch, she has quite, quite um, the background in this space. So just want to open the floor to you, 
Sibeli, in your expert opinion, what differentiates LTK in the creator space? So there are many, many things. Uh, first of all, I do not need to reiterate the importance of influencer marketing for any brand. Uh, but what I think is interesting to see is how big box and CPG brands are now investing in this market and how it has evolved from investing in a few mega influencers, similar to how brands used to partner with mega celebrities, to now thinking of influencer marketing at scale, leveraging hundreds or thousands of influencers to hit every stage of the customer journey on an ongoing basis. Um, where I think LTK really performs is on helping brands strategize and execute these large scale influencer marketing campaigns using historical data. It's so hard for brands to know who to work with. And if you want to work with influencers at scale, it's even harder to get the right data in terms of who's actually going to perform for your brand from the top of the funnel metrics, such as awareness and engagement, all the way down to the bottom of the funnel metrics like sales and conversion. And we have all that data. We've been working with influencers, consumers, and mega brands for the past 11 years. Now, another very interesting angle to think about on the subject of influencers and CPG and big box is to think of influencers as your digital sales associates. Uh, creators at LTK earn a commission on sales. So imagine having the best salespeople at scale, driving your product sales in stores and digitally in the most authentic way. So to finally answer your question, Ali, LTK is uniquely positioned to support CPG because we have over 11 years of data and experience and we're very focused on metrics. We drive full funnel results to our partner brands and retailers from the smallest emerging brand to the largest e-commerce and big box players in the world. I love it. And I could not have said that better myself. Um, so you heard it here first from Sibeli, our expert. Thank you so much. Um, very, very helpful. And of course, we're here to continue the combo and answer any questions um, brands have on the phone of just how we can really help support your initiatives. Um, so now we're going to shift gears and I'm really excited um, to introduce our amazing creators again. Um, thank you both for taking the time to share your insights with our brands today. Uh, so we just walked through some data on the CPG industry and how categories fit into both creator content and shopper behavior and really wanted to bring um, the topic full circle and hear directly from creators about how your content has evolved, what products you focus on, what you know about your shoppers. Um, so really, I guess without further ado, I, I quickly introduced the creators at the start of the webinar, but excited to officially introduce Christine Kong with The Daily Confidence and then Shala Sandoval with um, Treehouse Tread. So Welcome, we're, we're excited to have you. So just to kick it off, um, I'd love starting with Christina and then Shala, just tell us a little bit about yourselves. How did you get started as a, a creator and what content do you focus on? Sure. Hi again, um, I'm Christine Kong and thank you so much for having me. Uh, I started my blog and Instagram um, almost seven years ago. And um, in the beginning, I started out with um, just sharing fashion and outfits. I wanted to show moms that they can still look put together and be confident um, even after having kids. And then from fashion, it just kind of evolved um, more into my daily life uh, from beauty to fitness to food, just every day products that I was using. And over the years, my audience grew with me. I mean, I have new, new uh, followers, but you know, they're all kind of growing with me and really invested in my life. Um, instead of just seeing how I put outfits together, they want to know what recipes I'm making for my family, what skincare I'm using, hair care, makeup, you know, um, even my cell phone case, where I got that. So um, I've definitely seen this space constantly evolve um, from sharing just what I love and discovering new products and being able to guide my followers um, into what works for me and what, you know, what things that they can look into as well. I love it. Yeah, I, I always call creator marketing as the most powerful opt-in marketing campaign because exactly like you said, um, your audience has kind of opted into your into every aspect of your life. Um, Shala, I'd love to hear from you a little bit about yourself and kind of how you got started. 
Absolutely. Hi there. I'm Shala. Thank you everyone so much for having me. And I started Treehouse Threads in 2015 as a way to connect with other moms. I had just left my corporate job to stay at home with my kids. And as rewarding as that was, it was also weirdly isolating at the same time. And so Treehouse Threads started as like a kid's fashion and style blog. And quickly I saw that it could be more because people kept asking me for other recommendations. Like what sunscreen are you using? My kids have sensitive skin. What are you using at bath time? Vitamins, just so much. And so I knew that, you know, I could do more with it. And so it evolved to what it is now, which is a lifestyle brand where I just share what I love, which, you know, is DIYs, crafts, home decor, quick meal tips, um, parenting tips, and a lot more. Awesome. Um, well, creator marketing, I think the theme is it's just evolved over the years. Um, and creators have always been so plugged into what works, what doesn't work. Um, but what I think is so interesting is how much more data we have at our fingertips now. So Shala, starting with you and then Christine, who, I guess, who's your current audience now and how have they changed over the years? Yeah, a lot like what Christine said, my audience has grown with me too. It's kind of fun to see we went through the baby stage and now we're going through like the tween stage, but um, it's also attracted new followers and like young moms or let's say like even grandparents that are looking for things for their grandkids. My current audience is like 85% women primarily within the 25 to 44 demographic and that's pretty much stayed constant, which is nice. That's awesome. Well, you have a great pulse on your audience. What about yourself, Christine? I know you you did answer um, part of this question um, a minute ago. Yes, um, similar to Shala, my uh, audience is obviously a lot of women ages 25 to 44. That's, you know, um, the age group that, you know, really connects with me. And they range from everybody just starting on their skin care journey to moms that are having kids, homes um, that are interested in anti-aging or preventing aging. And it's really about like connecting and sharing um, about things that I'm going through, like melasma from childbirth or hair loss um, and real life things that really affect me. And I think that's where the connection and the investment in um, my recommendations and everything comes from. And of course, over the last two years, um, we've kind of evolved towards a lot of overall fitness, wellness, you know, natural products, things like that. Um, I also noticed that, you know, before we were doing a lot of static photos, but um, as we move into like the consumer goods, um, my audience does appreciate a good reels or a short form video because that really shows the application of the products or how you're using it or even like hacks um, that that maybe they don't know about. So um, I do know that they do like a good video too. <laughs> yeah, I think kind of that the video content, we've seen that just such on the rise here. And it's it's like a product review in real time. And it Absolutely. takes, you know, a few seconds to watch and you get all the information you need. So Definitely Gen Z and millennial is, is the theme, um, which is great that those are your audiences because that aligns exactly with, you know, the strong data set that we're seeing on our end. Um, I guess on that note, what kinds of social channels do you lean into um, as a space continues to evolve and change? How do you think about for this content and where you choose to post? Um, Christine, we can start with you and then Shala. Sure. Um, honestly, I focus mostly on um, Instagram just because it's quick, it's easy, and most of my audience tunes in there because I'm constantly, um, or I guess consistently posting on that platform. I also consistently post on the Like to Know It app just because um, it, I like it. It's a little uh, less formal, I guess, or curated than Instagram, and you can literally just snapshot things as, you know, if you buy them. Um, sometimes things sell out quickly. So it's nice to just kind of get that shot in and say, hey, you know, size is going fast, get this. Um, and my audience appreciates it because they get the exact links. Um, they don't need to shop around, go to a website and do all that digging. I did it for them. So um, also another platform that I've kind of started to uh, use a little bit more is Pinterest. I think it's just great to show, um, you know, some video as well as like inspo on there too. Um, and I know my audience uh, appreciates that as well. Awesome. Shala, what about yourself? What channels do you see yourself posting on? 
Similar to Christine, I mean, I lean into Instagram primarily. I cross post a lot of that on to like to know it as well. Um, Pinterest is probably my second and I'm dabbling in TikTok because I feel like you're behind if you don't. Um, I mean, I cater my content to each platform because not everything, as you know, performs well across the board. So while like reels are really hot on Instagram, people also kind of miss photos. But I noticed that like a singular static photo doesn't do well. If I do a photo dump or let's say put a video in the second um, carousel, it seems to do better. So it's a lot of tweaking, a lot of my own little experiments too, to see what's, what my audience likes. Um, and like my Pinterest audience, as a, for example, the primarily the primary demographic there is uh, 25 to 34, and they love idea pins. And I found this out last year. So I started catering to them directly. And like I was able to grow my 98 day impressions to something over like 4 million steadily for the year, just by like knowing what they want. So you just kind of have to cater to each group. Yeah, I mean, that's fascinating that's a great kind of example in itself just of you know it's everything is so data backed every platform is so data backed and i think uh, my main takeaway just hearing you both talk is kind of lean on the creator to figure out what channel makes most sense for their for their audience so from the brand standpoint that's definitely um kind of a good a good train of thought and a good recommendation um so thank you both for giving us insight into your content and audience um as a brand, I think the big learning here is how much creators have an understanding of their own businesses. So very similar to the companies on the Zoom today. Um, like we said, each link, each um, test you put out there is really strategic and kind of pivots over time. Um, so we're going to shift gears now and talk specifically about CPG products. So Shala, starting with you, um, you have a strong focus on family content. I'd love to hear just a bit about what your audience expects from this content. How do they interact with that content? Sure. So I feel like my audience expects kind of like multifaceted content that they can like save and share and shop. So for example, like we covered the launch of a big company's newest cruise ship and my followers didn't just want to know like what type of room to book. They wanted to know where to eat, um, what snacks I'm packing on the long plane ride from California to Florida, what's in my emergency kit if one of us gets sick, like what medications, what do I have on hand, what DIYs we did, what our coordinating outfits were, and then like even when we got home, it was like hacks on how I get my laundry done like that first like few days, and I feel like it's nice because it's all encompassing which is really nice for me because I can never say that I'm at a lack of content. Like I always have something to create. So that's pretty awesome. Yes. It sounds very useful for your followers. It's like a guide of what to do next. It's yeah. Amazing. Um, Christine, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear from you. So you have a really strong focus on beauty content on your platform. Um, when I was scrolling some of your content, it's absolutely stunning um, with, with beauty products that you promote. So tell us a little bit about how you decide the beauty brands that you link to, what kind of linking strategy um, do you typically follow in your content? Um, I'm definitely beauty obsessed and I know uh, my audience is too because they are all of a similar age and they, um, when it comes to like beauty brands, I don't really stick to a strategy. I really just post what I love and um, I think it's, you know, it could be from luxury to drugstore because it's not like I only stick to one type of brand or, you know, nobody does. It's not like you use one product, you know, one brand and use all the products from that line. It's all about, you know, oh, this is a great drugstore product that I found and I absolutely love it. And then sometimes I use something higher end or, or it could be super clean products or, you know, so it's honestly just what I really love. Um, I, I also, I feel like when I post, um, I like to stick to, you know, brands that I am constantly using and like, I don't like to do like one-off things just because I feel like it's, it's not authentic. So if I share, if I love something, I share it often because my audience then will understand that I love this brand. I love this product and they, you know, they have to kind of get used to seeing something a lot and me using it a lot. Um, otherwise, if I just do it once, they're like, oh, it's just, you know, a one-off and, and they don't appreciate that. <laughs> 
No, I love that. I personally think I shop beauty exclusively through creators because I can't even fathom trying a new product without creator recommendations at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I completely agree. It's kind of that like high, low, what are you loving? Um, and then kind of remaining authentic. I think that's so important. Um, so I loved, I guess, kind of the last question in this section before we move on to the next, um, hear from you both. So Shala, we'll start with you. Um, but in your opinion, are, are products you choose to link to today more diverse than the products you chose to link to just even two or three years ago? Um, if so, kind of what categories are you posting more about and kind of was, how was that driven? Was it driven from your audience or just through natural life and um, progressions? Absolutely. I mean, I think that once you start seeing your audience as your community, you talk to them like you would your friends, right? So your friends are constantly sharing what they love. There's no niche. There's no boundaries on what you can share. It's like when you're at dinner, you're all talking about things. And so that's kind of how I will treat my audience too. So I'll talk a lot more about like, for example, we just got out of like baseball and softball season. So I was talking about how to get stains out of pants and all of that. I talk a lot more like you said, we talk a lot about um, cleaning supplies or um, just different moisturizers that I'm using. In the summer, it's all about the sunscreen or uh, protein powder. So it feels like I just talk a lot more about just it's more than kids fashion. And as far as feedback from my audience, people want to be seen and they want to connect. When the pandemic started, I had a lot of requests for like easy crafts and community building ideas. And we did like things that were just beyond, you know, they were products, but they were also building your community. So we did like a community food drive and so many people in my audience did the same. And it was pretty cool as a creator to see that your work on like a micro level could create change on the macro level. And so I realized that people just want to see more. Oh, that's such a cool and powerful story about rallying your community and, and followers. I think you're so right. It's more than just, you know, a follow on Instagram. It's people who um, are invested and they want to learn from you and they really want to connect. Um, and I think that's just such a powerful story. Uh, Christine, what about yourself? Um, I guess, is your linking today different than it was a couple of years ago? And what categories do you really see yourself leaning into? Yes, absolutely. As, um, especially in the beauty industry. I mean, there's so many new brands popping up every single day um, and it's hard to keep up. It's great because you have access to so many more um, uh, you know, products, but it's overwhelming at the same time. And I always say this to my followers. It's like, you know, I'm the guinea pig. I'm doing the testing for you. And, um, you know, obviously they don't have, you know, this means maybe to buy everything out there under the sun. So here, let me test it for you. I, you know, obviously I get these gifted. I'm going to test and share the ones that I love. Sometimes I share the ones that maybe didn't work for me too, because I think it is, um, it's, you have to share both sides sometimes, you know, like you have to be honest with your audience and they appreciate that. And lately, um, I feel like, uh, I'm finding so many great things that, for example, like Target, their beauty department is like on fire and they have so many brands. So like a huge clean um, skincare section as well. And um, it's fun to go in there. Sometimes I'm in there and I'm showing, you know, like just, hey, I'm shopping and people will see the stories and be like, oh, have you tried that brand? Have you tried that? And, you know, and it, it's nice to see that because sometimes maybe I wasn't going to get that brand and I try it because one of my followers is interested in it. And I try it and I share it and I, you know, it is about connecting and I'll reach out to them and say, Hey, you know what, that, I tried that. And this is what I thought about it. So, um, there's a, my linking strategy and, you know, all that has, has become more diverse in the brands that I, you know, am looking to partner with and also using just because the industry is so crazy and so big right now. Yeah, no. And I think that example, it really kind of hits home that online offline strategy. I think especially now consumers really and shoppers really appreciate that solid in-store moment. There's nothing like touching a beautiful beauty package in store um, to kind of make you want to put it in your cart to buy. Um, awesome. Kind of, so we're going to move into our last section of the panel. So um, we went through a ton of data at the start of the presentation, but really kind of the themes we're hearing are shoppers are turning to creators for really an understanding of everything that they're using in their daily lives. So shall I'd love to hear from you, what makes a good campaign or brand partnership in the CPG space? 
Is there anything you prefer in campaigns when working um, with these types of brands? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love brands that um, let me roll with my creativity and then pitch my vision to them. I feel like that's when we're truly collaborative. Um, and as Christine said, uh, she mentioned on like long-term collaborations, I feel like when those types of um, collaborations work best when we could sprinkle in like a well-spaced campaign and keep talking about products because that is truly authentic. You won't use it like Christine said, it's not a one and done. So those seem to work best. Those are the ones I prefer. I agree. I think especially for CPG, it's not like you know, you're using it once, it's a consistent mm -hmm. thing. You're using the mascara daily for, you know, a while, or you're using um, the food or the water, the spark new sparkling water you're trying. It comes in a pack of 24. So I agree. It's, it's something you want to make sure you really um, like and have it organically sprinkled in through content. Um, Christine, what are your, some of your favorite CPG brands to link to and really kind of What's your strategy when introducing your audience to a new brand? Um, yeah, I mean, the brands that I link to are the ones that I use consistently, the ones that I even would repurchase myself. Even if they weren't gifted, I would buy them, you know, whether it's like that Sawasu Serum or the Super Goop Sunscreen or the Native Body Wash. I mean, it spans like everywhere from, you know, supplements to matcha to everything. So um, I do share them, you know, when I'm going through my morning routine and it's not necessarily like here, link to buy. Like I'm not always pushing, you know, buy, buy, buy. I just share, hey, this is this is what I'm using. Um, and I think the audience, you know, my audience appreciates that as well. And when it comes to like introducing a new brand, um, if I'm getting something gifted, I do an unboxing and I share. Again, I'm not linking anything. I'm just saying, hey, this is what I get. A few days later, I said, hey, I'm trying this out for the first time. This is my first impression. And then a few weeks later, I really love this product. Let me tell you why. And then maybe that's where I'm like, here's a link if you guys want to try that out. I love that strategy. Then then it kind of has your seal of approval on it. Right, right. So it's not like just like, hey, I got this. It's great. The worst is actually when sometimes you see people and they're like, oh, you know, buy this product and they're like starting to use it. And it literally <laughs> has not even been opened or like dug in. And I'm like, have they tried that? Or are they trying that for the first time? You know, so you definitely want to build that um, trust and like say, you know, I'm actually using this. This is half empty, you know? Yeah, yeah, that authenticity. I think that goes such a long way. Um, Shala, I, we saw some data on just like shopping moments in the LTK app. How do you personally prep for holiday posting and what, what pivotal moments do you typically focus on? I love holiday. I mean, I and my husband makes fun of me because I can make a holiday out of anything. But um, I have worked with brands and publications in the past on forecasting holiday trends. And the most important thing is to start early. I mean, we started back to school content before the kids were out of school in June. And I think it's important to like, and back to school is a huge like gateway to all the rest of the fun we're going to have the rest of the year. So Halloween's a big um, consumer spending holiday on my social platforms. And I'm already seeing people like pinning, saving, sharing things on all social media platforms for Halloween and Christmas. And I will start like planning for Halloween in August, planning for Christmas in October. And like we've shot Christmas campaigns a lot of times in October where we move all the Halloween decorations to the side, put up the Christmas tree and shoot or um and I feel like it's important to be ahead because people want to know. They look to you like our audience looks to us as the experts. That's our job to know what it is that's going to be hot this year, whether, you know, it's a toy, a makeup item, fashion, anything. They look to us for that. So we have to be prepared early on. Yeah. And we are seeing kind of that exact data on our end. What we've seen recently is just, you know, shopping windows are expanding. People want to make sure they're shopping the right sales and on top of getting the right products at the right time, just with inventory and stuff. So um, what you said matches exactly what we're seeing on our end. Um, Christine, how do you organically weave in beauty and food content with your, with your fashion content? Um, do you review comments from your followers and kind of what's that, that feedback and mix look like for you? Yeah, of course. As I mentioned, you know, I started out with fashion, but, you know, as um, I noticed that, like, when I would share recipes on my stories and people were really interested, like, what's in my, you know, Trader Joe's cart? Like, they really wanted to know because there are moms, like, wanting easy recipes um, 
or products that they haven't purchased yet they, they really wanted to know. Um, like for example, yesterday I just said, oh, I'm, you know, at this, uh, I was at a dermatologist going to talk about, you know, dealing with my melasma. And I got so many comments like, what did she say? What's the, you know, I need help on my skin, blah, blah, blah. Like that kind of stuff people are invested in. Um, and also I think it's good that, um, you know, when you sprinkle in different content, they're not used to seeing the same thing. So it's like, oh, it's just uh, outfit, outfit. You know, they want to see the whole aspect of your life. Like recently my husband has been joining me on my post and they really like that. You know, every time he comes up, you know, um, there's more engagement on that. They want to see um, my Hailey Bieber chrome nails. You know, they want to see it all. It's about the whole package. Um, and I definitely review um, all my comments I try to go through. Um, through, especially when they have questions, because then they really, you know, they really care. They really want to know. They really want that product. So um, it's it's helpful not only for me because I'm I also learn from them and their comments. Um, it helps me figure out what content they want to see, and it also um, you know helps me put in a deeper connection with them as well. No, I I love that. Um, and it sounds like you kind of have a good grasp of what your audience wants to see when and how to like organically make sure your content has a good flow to it. Um, so as the webinar comes to a wrap, we just want to thank both of you for sharing your insight. So last question, um, and just thinking of everything from like a brand lens, hearing insights from creators are so valuable to really just keep a pulse. This industry is changing so rapidly, so quickly it's evolving. New social channels are popping up. Um, almost on, you know, a yearly or a couple times a year basis. And um, so just, I guess you have a room full of brands. What's your advice when working with creators and kind of the beauty, food and bev and just CPG space in general? What would you, what would you give um, advice to brands on? Um, Christine, we can start with you and then Shala, we'll can end with you. Sure. I think we've mentioned this um, before, you know, multiple times, but I really do think that long-term investment partnership is um, so helpful, super authentic. Um, not only does it build a relationship between the creator and the brand and just, um, you know, there's a, a, an investment in the company, the products from that standpoint, but there's also a connection with, you know, your followers and you, and they really trust um, your opinion and your value, your uh, review on the product. Um, I also, you know, for me personally, I also like it when the um, brand cross promotes um, as well or just uses your content on their site because I think from, you know, they also have a different audience as well um, following their page and for them to also see real life people using their products or sharing those products and also um, creates like a different page or aesthetic um, on the brand's feed, I think it's also helpful for them too. And it does show that you're truly like a partner um, in that aspect. Yeah, we've seen a huge uptick in kind of that need from brands, from everything from like media boosting to campaigns just for content for their website. So that definitely fits in line with what we're seeing. Sorry, one um, more thing. I forgot to add this though. Yeah. But like, you know, I was just thinking back to like when I'm shopping in the store too. I, there's so many times where somebody's like, oh my gosh, I forgot, you know, like, because when you're at a store like Sephora or Ulta or Target or whatever you are and you are there to like pick up something and then you see, oh my gosh, I remember she, her talking about this and I want to get that too. Um, it would be nice like to kind of share that in-store um, experience as well. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but if, you know, it's nice to have um, an option for them to shop online, but if they forgot something online and they're at the store already and they want to pick it up, then that would be great too. <laughs> yes, that online to offline is definitely a big topic right now. Um, Shala, what about yourself? What, what advice would you give to brands in this space? I mean, Christine took all the words right out of mouth, my mouth. <laughs> I probably said it better. Um, but I would say, I think one thing that I think about a lot is like, you know, and I've said this already, it's a collaborative effort. So treat each other as partners. Like I feel like sometimes the brands that I work best with are the ones that trust that I know my audience, like sometimes a brand will come and ask like that maybe I hold a product and it's the hero of the shot and that might work well on the brand's page, but won't necessarily track as well on my page. But at the same time, like I want the brand to know that I've spent a lot of time looking at their website, looking at their socials, trying to understand what their brand looks like and likes, and then marry that with my own brand so that it works well for everyone. And if that is the type of shot they want, I'm totally good with offering that as like the second or third photo in a carousel 
or offering to that is what they want to use for so their socials for cross promotion. So I completely agree. Yeah. And I think that goes back to just, again, the authenticity of creator and this channel, while it might not be this like solo shot, it's this, it's a lifestyle experience with creators. Um, I think that's a great example. Um, but that is all the content we have for today. So I just want to thank all the brands. Thanks to Belly, Christine, and Shala for, for joining us. I hope brands on the phone today took away some good insights from our recent studies and learned a few um, new tidbits from our creator panel. And I hope everyone has a wonderful um, rest of your week and day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.